Thumbs up with Alec, though. Could be bad. Yo, we have time for the not 2015 Don Traveler. Are you very excited? Fly, <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Here, catch the keys. Slide on in. Let's try it out. Oh, you can't. Well, uh, there will be no songs today because we have this lovely lady from Orange Coast who makes us our very favorite TV show. And uh, I want to bring her out here right now, the impossible girl, Janet Palmer. Dramatic storytelling is brilliant. Um, 
And also, what's interesting is we're filming now, so where it's left Clara and how it is going to bring her and the Doctor together um, is really interesting where it will take them next. So I think it's a direction that no one was expecting, which is always a good thing. Thank you. But poor Sam. Poor Danny Pink. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hi. I would like to apologize for the guy who asked you the inappropriate question yesterday. <laughs> Typi okay. Typically, people in Indiana don't act that way. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, my aunt has a question for you. She wants to know, um, in the special features of the 50th uh, anniversary special, it listed you as a companion and an enigma, and wanted to know, did you know that you would be more than just a companion? Um. I knew, I had a really strange introduction into the show. My audition process was absolutely bizarre because I just kept being sent lots of different characters and with different names and I was like, well, who are they? What accent do they have? You know, I had no scripts to read. I only had these scenes that Stephen sent. And I was like, what, what do they want? Like, am I a modern girl? Am I, am I this kind of um, Nancy from Oliver thing? Am I like Mary Poppins? Like, that obviously, I was thinking they just wanted to put me in a room with Matt, and then try all these different characters, and I thought, and then we're going to figure out what they want the new companion to be. So I had no idea. Stephen just said, I'm really sorry. Just please come into the room. Don't ask any questions, and you know, we'll explain later. <laughs> so it was really okay. okay. Um, and then once they explained, I was going to be all these different characters, and the impossible girl who, I spent the entire series, but I didn't know how that was going to be wrapped up. So, um, Tell you a very long, a long winded way of saying I knew it wasn't a regular introduction, but I didn't have any idea I'd end up filming a scene with um, being inserted into old like William Hartman footage or anything like that. I didn't know I'd be going through the Doctor's timeline and having met all of them. Um, so I knew it wasn't a regular route, but I'm not like that. But you never do with Stephen Moffat. <laughs> you never do. You pick up the script. You think you've got an inkling of what's going to happen. Thank you.
who her favorite game is, um, so she'll hold the figure in her hand and like make the figure do like funny positions, and then I have to do them as well, as if like she's controlling me. So that's quite, that's kind of a fun game to play at Christmas. <laughs>
Matt and David all had to be like talking and then like turned to me and every time they did it, I, I caused, I just burst into, into laughter because having the three of them, I mean, having one doctor, I mean, is, is <laughs> quite, it's quite tiring. So having three, it was kind of, it was more riveting to watch actually, to watch the three of them work together and it's kind of like three, one mind in three people all kind of talking over one another and working together. So it was, um, do you know what? I was like reduced to like a giggling girl. That's <laughs> how it was. And I thought, you know, me, me and Stephen made jokes like, you know, you know, I'll keep everybody straight, and you know, I, you know, with all the kind of, um, you know, there's a bit of politeness at first of like, oh David, do you want to drive the TARDIS in this scene, or should I drive the TARDIS in this scene? And um, you know, it all kind of started off like that. But what happened was, it was just, it was just like a, it was just a group of doctors. It was amazing. Um, it was really. It was a really interesting way to interact with three of them. Um, and John Hurt is such a dude as well. Like He's got so many cool stories. He's an amazing man. Um, and what was the other question? Um, how, how do you think Clara, Clara would be with David Tennant as the doctor? I don't know. It's not so interesting. Is. I don't know if you remember, at the end of the 50th, he came and kissed her, and, and she was a bit giggly. And so I don't, it's interesting, because with Matt's doctor, and with Peter's doctor, like she's quite strong and straight, and has to be like, no, listen, hey, you know, she can be a bit more bossy, maybe is the word, um, and a bit more control freaky, because they're kind of, um, they're wired differently. So I actually don't know with David, so I think, um, I, th I think the energy would be really, really different, but I don't quite know, I don't know how it would work, actually, because I don't think she'd need to be kind of in control as much, if that makes sense. That does. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 
if you could be an angel from Dr. Who or anything else in the world, who would you be? I like villains who move slowly. I find that really freaks me out. So maybe like the silence or somebody like that, like people, I think having the confidence to move slowly because you know you're gonna get your victim is really terrifying to me. Um, so maybe them, and I've always said I like the whisper man, I wish I want them to come back. There's something so cool and collected about them that I found very eerie. Hi, thank you for um, My question is, in my mind, you are two companions. You have Osmond and you have Clara. Do you think, and please, Moffat, make this happen if you're watching, we will see the evolution from Clara into Osmond? Interesting. Um, the problem is Clara's going to need to live a very long time to become Osmond, because Osmond was futuristic. Although I suppose they have a target, so. <laughs> that can happen. Um, I don't know, but I do hope we see Osman again. Thank you. And will you be my future husband? Honestly, I'm Or, you know, or just kind of... Well, it's really, it, 
interesting because you start the series and, you know, with Stephen, it's not written as such. You have maybe a couple of scripts. So it's a show where Stephen watches the brushes every day and he is always writing at the same time as you're filming. So it's quite a, um, uh, what's, the, what's the word? Like, it's quite an organic thing and it's quite a tailored, not tailored, is that the right word? It all happens at once, so you're kind of running alongside each other at the same time. So I think I'm right in saying, Bow Ties of Cool came out of something Matt had said in a costume fitting. So it's really, in, like, the process kind of informs, informs each other and, and Stephen develops things all the time. So I suppose the answer is a, a bit of both, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's something that's constantly evolving all the time. Good question. And Bow Ties are cool, that's it. Would be to 
read as much as you can, to read as many stories as you can, to watch lots of films, and for, from it, for it all to become from a place of storytelling. Um, if you like adventures and stories and books and writing, um, that would be my advice, to watch as much as you can and be interested in other people and their stories as much as you can. And I think the more of that you can do, the better actor you will become. You're welcome. And with that, I'm afraid we're out of time. I'm really sorry. So that's a that's a horrible thing about being a Doctor Who fan. Running out of time. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, gang. But before you go, I do have something to give to you. Uh, first off, from the from the uh, uh, of, of, on behalf of the Royal Order of the TARDIS, I present you with this. Lovely bottle cap TARDIS necklace. Very nice. My brother makes those, and he and his wife. And on behalf of the Hoosier Network and the Doctor Who uh, Science and Science Fiction Connection, I'd like to make you an honorary Hoosier Network member. You are now a Hoosier. You're a <laughs>